Hey guys, this week is going to be a lot of info that you've been craving. We've got all the different models that we use out here, and specifically, even though we have a lot of impacts, we have other guns too, and we're going to explain why sometimes we choose to go away from the standard impact for a hunting situation or target yeah. shooting. Um, this isn't all of the guns, but a lot of them are duplicates, and I think it's a good representation yeah. of what we generally hunt. Um, and we've got, you know, an Air Force, we've got a Red Ryder, <laughs> we got all kinds of and stuff. And we use them all. Yeah, so we really do, actually. Yeah, we have a fun with them um, all. So this is kind of just like an updated gear video, but much more than that, because we're going to hopefully help some people that are trying to decide what style of gun do I need. And I think this probably translates also to not even just FX guns, but, you know, guns in general why you might want a long one with a 700 millimeter barrel and why you might want a shorter one or what, what calibers, what length, liners yes. and all that stuff. So we're going to get into it. We're going to break it down gun by gun and we're going to put timestamps in the description so that if you're not interested in 90% of this, you don't have to watch it. You can skip right to the gun that you're interested in. Sounds good, buddy. All right, brother. Let's do it. The following is a list of companies that we've been using since the very beginning and now they actually help us provide some of this content for you guys. We'd love it if you would show them some support. Perfect. All right, so the Dream Tech. It's one of my favorites. One of my favorites. I love um, it. And I think we're probably going to end up saying that about just about each one, but it's because they're all specialized use. Like for me, this gun belongs in a barn and in the squirrel woods. It's one of my favorites. It's comfortable to carry. And it's really quiet. Nice and light. Yeah, it's nice and light. Um, and it takes a sling really well, too. Yeah. And not all air guns take slings well. So that's another thing. Like if I'm going out for a long walk in the woods looking for mushrooms or something and I want to be able to shoot a squirrel while I'm out there, this slings up nicely. The yeah, single um, point is what we use, what I use is the single point sling. Yeah, yeah, and that's, it keeps it right there ready to go. Um, we've, I think, what's the furthest you've shot with this 140, one? I shot that one pigeon off the side. Yeah, so 140 yards, <laughs> it's a 22 caliber. Um, we shoot Hades pellets out yeah. of these because they really hit well. Um, we get about two full mags, two full mags out of each fill, and uh, at 150 bar. Yeah, 150 bar, and we quiet it with a Donny. Oh my God, it's it's so quiet. Yeah, and it's a great little truck gun because it's so short that it's kind of robust. Um, this folds away, of course, so now you're looking at the ability to take this off, and the whole gun is just that. I mean, that's. A short area and another reason I like this for in the barns is a lot of the places we go to they don't want to scare the cows right and like I said this thing is so quiet in the barn that yeah. the cows don't even flinch when she quiet yeah and you can turn them down they have the power wheels like many of the other FX guns do but we don't bother no um, it's quiet enough and uh, it hits them hard so for a 22 oh my god this is my vote <laughs> can't can't ask for any better than this yeah one of the other main reasons to get a gun like this is for smaller frame shooters and younger shooters. I have two kids and the impact is a lot for them to handle in terms of yeah. like moving it around. Um, he still does it, but <laughs> yeah, but this, <laughs> this is nice. Though, it's great. You know, um, for me, I shoot it out here and then my son slams it in like that. And, and me too. Yeah. <laughs> my little T-Rex arms. <laughs> I wish you had a t-shirt on. So oh you my look. god. <laughs> um, and then, you know, optics for this gun, I, I've had everything from a red dot oh on god. it to a Titan yeah. and the Nexus is sat on it. Um, they're worthy of putting a good scope on because, like we said, I mean, you can shoot past 100 yards with this thing. Um, yeah. But its main purpose in life for me is like a 50-yard tack driver. 
It um, is too. I mean, you could just shoot them in the head all day long, 50 yards. Yeah. These pellets. It's really where that gun belongs, I think. Yeah. You know, 75 and under, but if you wanted to push it, you can. So don't think you're out of the game completely if you decide to go with a, a small dream line. For sure. Yeah. All right, guys. So this one is a beautiful, like the stock is insane. I saw this down at the Pyramid Cup last year. And uh, I saw that on the table, it's the continuum, and it has a 700 millimeter barrel that goes with this. And uh, I missed on camera. I'll tell you, we can't take this guy anywhere when I'm trying to kill something. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I saw this, I was telling Keith about it, and I said, one day I'm going to own one of those things. Yeah, he, he came back so, all stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my first uh, rifle, like right? serious one, I mean, my very first PCP was that. Air Force Talon SS that you gave me. Yeah. But my first repeater was the original Crown with the 600 millimeter barrel and the extendable shroud. Yeah. And that's a great gun. Um, I think well over 200 yards many, many times. Oh, yeah. Um, with that gun. But once I handled the Continuum, I didn't care about the extra little bit of range that I got with the original. Because this, it's such, a, you still get that like slick feel. It feels like a real hunting rifle. It really does. And yeah. you get the compactness, which is really nice in barns and squirrel woods. Um, if I could only buy one and I had to hunt with it, it might be this. Like, I love the um, the Wildcat, but the traditional controls on this with yeah. the safety and Oh my safety God, you right rock here. this thing like Pulse right here. Um, you can carry these things all day long. And I think, if you were to do a speed challenge shoot, you should use this gun. Yeah. Because you are fast. With with it. <laughs> with it's this just thing. all like so yeah. nice with that thumb hole. Oh, Mine's yeah. synthetic. This one is Norm's. Yeah. Um, they are both 25 caliber. Yeah. And 380 barrels. Um, I think we we're the way we, we kind of tuned them up a little bit. We're shooting them a little bit fast um, for the length barrel that they are. I feel like. It was 860 or That's so. That's what I was going to say, 860. Yeah. Um, with 34 grain pellets. Yeah. Um, pretty much all of our regulators, we, we take them to 150. Yeah. Um, On an average, I mean, yeah. give or take 10. Yeah. Yeah. I, people always ask, you know, well, where should I start? Start at 140. Don't go above 160, is my experience. Yeah. And probably you're going to stay at 150. Um, the I think furthest that we've taken birds with this is like a buck 45. Oh yeah off of that one silo up north yeah um, yeah and that's in one of our videos yeah you'll, you'll see it and that's with the 380 whether they come with a 700 millimeter barrel which is awesome looking we never even put them on no we, we, still we still literally don't. can't tell you how a 700 no. shoots because no. we haven't put it on yeah. I imagine it turns this gun into even more than my original crown was yeah because that was a 600 I think you're basically gonna have, you know, impact accuracy at long range if you go that route. Yep. Um, but for me, it's like, oh, this yeah. was just so sexy, I couldn't take it off. And again, we put uh, Donnie's on these, mm -hmm. and this thing is so quiet. This is my second choice for a barn gun, for sure. Yeah, well, I was shooting um, the light pellets at first before I even tried the 34s, and the 34 shot better, but I was like an inch and a half at 100 yards, I think, the very first day. Um, Justin tuned them up before he sent them to us, and they're yeah. just awesome. And that's, by the way, all you have to do is tell the guys at Utah what pellet you're going to shoot and what speed you want to shoot it at, and it'll come ready. You it's don't ready. have to tinker with these guns. Nope. Fill it with um, air and pellets and just have fun. Yeah, exactly. Those guys uh, do an amazing job there for sure. And if you're going to shoot pellets too, like, I, you don't need to fret about the tune. You know, like, I haven't met one of these rifles or any of the FX ones that if you're gonna shoot pellets, it doesn't just shoot. I mean, it yeah. just shoots. And so when you start like, I wanna shoot slugs. Oh yeah. yeah. I wanna shoot them at a thousand feet yeah. per second. And I get that and we do that. Yeah, we do. Um, but that takes a lot of tinkering. But any of these guns um, from FX with that smooth twist, and now they got the superior. I mean, you throw yeah. pellets in it, squeeze the trigger and it goes. You don't have to be a tinkerer yeah, to, so don't to have worry fun with them. about that. Um, I also like how this has the, the three levels of power, yeah. um, plus all the other uh, power adjuster on the back here. So you guys know what I'm talking about. You can tell it what caliber or low power to go to. 
and there's also this one. So a lot of times when we walk into a barn, all I do is turn that one to low and yeah. plant birds. I mean. And I think we were down to like 460 feet per second. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. We had them going really slow, yep. which was really nice for, oh, yeah. you know, we go to some of these barns that have paper, oh. paper thin roofs. So I really, all the guns that have that option, I love. Like the FX Impact has the valve adjuster here, and it's not something you want to mess with just to walk in a barn and then take it back out. It's not as repeatable as just clicking, clicking to it. one of those exactly. three power levels. Yep. So if you're looking for a gun to be, I've literally been in a barn, shot a bird at like 10 yards right, on the low, then you come out, yeah. turn it to high, and snipe one at 200. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. It, not with this barrel. No, um, that with your other system. gun. Yeah, with the yeah. 600. Um, yeah. But if, if that's the type of gun you're into, it's a great choice and it just feels good because you've got that traditional stock. I love um, it. Yeah, I don't have anything but good things to say about this. And again, we get about two mags. I mean, yeah, I can't think of a gun that we don't get two mags out of unless we're pushing it to screen. But I don't even, oh, and that would be my 30 cal uh, Wildcat, which we'll get to. Right, yeah. And I got that cranked up and... Um, it's coming. Be patient, I know. Buddy. I it's, know you love it. I do. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's get to another one. Let's do All it. Right. Well, now we got one of my favorites uh, that Keith didn't like originally when I got the first Wildcat. Well, it wasn't the Wildcat MK3, though. No. To be fair, that was the MK2. True. Yeah. And I still... Well, no, I like that too. <laughs> this is the this is better. Yeah, this is much better. Um, we both love. This is our favorite carrying gun to carry in the woods, carry in the barns. It doesn't poke you in the back if you have it slung on you and stuff. Everything is all so smooth. smooth. Um, nice to grip. It's so balanced. Um, this here, if you guys are wondering, this is just one of my OCD safety things. I yeah, it doesn't. Made doesn't come with Norm's craziness no, on it. No, that's just something that we're so used to our impacts uh, having the safety up front that I just wanted to add that in there. That's uh, my only complaint about this yes. setup is that the safety is in the rear. And I, when I was shooting just this gun, I shot just this for like maybe a month. Mm -hmm. And then it was no big deal at all because yeah. I was used to it. But then when I switched back to the impact and then I went back to it and it was like, oh, right, it's back here. Yeah. So that's something that a lot of air guns have. Oh, yeah, back. absolutely. Um, I would just prefer it to be up here. It's um, a lot more convenient. You don't even have yeah. to take your, your hand out of here right. to, to, to work the safety. That um, being said, though, the features of this thing in terms of carryability oh, and compactness and adjustability, I think, outweigh you know, my dislike of the safety location yeah. by a lot. Um, I still, still shoot this gun all the time. First, first outing with it, shooting a 25 grain pellet. I killed a bird at 180 yards. Oh, that's, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's on one of our Off back that videos. wire. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was on the top of the silo. Remember, he just got stolen. Oh, slip. that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what the compact that's barrel. Right. These yeah. are not the sniper versions. These are the short barrels. Unbelievable. Um, and we shoot heavies out of them now, but. Um. And the good thing about this one now, the MK3, is the adjustability of the power yeah. wheel in the back. Yeah, that is a big deal. Again, that puts you right back into the zone where you're in the barn, Absolutely. you turn it down, you take your shot, you come out of the barn, you turn it back up, you're ready to snipe again. So. Yeah, I mean, what an offhand gun. I mean, oh, yeah. you shoot this thing offhand, like, I don't know, I think it's between this and the little dream tack. For offhand guns, yeah, yeah. For you, I I think I prefer this though. Yeah. Because it it pulls in nicer. Like this feels better than you know the um, AR stock that I put on my Dream Tech. Yeah. And this is I don't know. There's something about this this grip. It's it's an AR, but it's a thumb hole, and it I don't know. Yeah. I like that better. It just tucks in nicer. Whereas the Dream Tech is just a little bit sharper. I would say. Um, and it's not a detractor at all. It's just, if I'm gonna shoot offhand, for some reason, my palm sits under that just really nice. Yeah, and this is the 30 cal. Um, oh yeah, that's right, this is 30 cal. I got, yeah. mine's in 25, yours is Mine's. And I shot one at 183, 
I think when my wife was with me, I shot with this oh, one, yeah, yeah. 183 yards, and it's just it's amazing that, like you say, you can turn that wheel down, go in the barn, shoot, come out, turn that wheel back up, and then crank one out at 183 yards right. with the same gun. I mean, I don't know. I think this is this is one of my favorites right here. Man. And what's really cool too is I was really leery when I got my original crown with the power wheels. I was worried that it would take like a few shots to settle in, like when you change right yes, pressure. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that. No. Um, so when you turn that wheel, first of all, you know, it can't be cocked when you do it. it can't be under tension, but when you turn that wheel, it goes to where it is and it's so repeatable. We've chronoed these where you know it goes right back to the same speed yeah. every time. So we like to have like one idea of where we want to be if we're in a barn, and then when we want to shoot long, we turn it up. Um, and mine's not even maxed out. No, and it's, mine it's, is. This one we only, <laughs> we only get about one mag, maybe uh, one mag and a few extra. Yeah. Because I get this crank in, I don't know, like 880. With a 44 grain pellet. Yeah, with a 44 grain In that short barrel. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you got to crank it. It's rocking. But yeah. I'll tell you what, it's still a laser, man. Mine still gets two mags. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but he needs the extra it. shots. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to another one. All right. <laughs> so this is another one that Norm got, <laughs> and then I immediately took ownership of for a slight amount of time. If you watched our woodshot hunting video, you can hear him crying about oh how I stole God. his gun. <laughs> this is my go-to gun. It's awesome. If I had to grab just one gun. This is the one I grab. And this is a 30 caliber. 30 cal. Set up shooting 44 grain FX pellets. 910 feet a second. Let's say that again. It's 44 grain pellets at 910 feet per second. 910 feet per second out of the short. Out of the short. And you get a magazine and a little bit. And a little extra, yeah. So maybe about 30. Yeah. Shots, because it's what, 23 in the mag? 23 in the mag. But when we shoot it empty, we just re-air it. I mean, um, but because who wants to shoot two more shots? Now, you thought you were surprised at the feet per second? Yeah. I shot this out of 270 yards when I was getting mm -hmm. the dope for this, and I shot a rock about the size of my fist five times out of five times at 270 yards with pellets. Yeah. I remember you calling <laughs> me to tell me that. No, I like, still nah, cannot believe that this gun yeah. with that short barrel is capable of doing that. If you guys have any doubt about what this gun can do, just roll back, I think, one or two videos. Yeah. And it's all this gun. The um, whole, yeah. Woodchuck and Pigeon. And I I missed because of wind. I got it wrong. But I took a shot at 225 yeah. off the dope you had. And uh, it was right there, man. It was just, oh, it was, yeah. I was like, oh, A brutal. little bit of wind. That's, that's what's fun about shooting the pellets. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doping that wind. Oh, you bet. Um, this gun is one of those compact versions that deserves super high-end glass like it can do more than it looks like oh, it can. so um you have the titan on here i think that's the perfect choice for oh, this gun absolutely uh, and the big can and i think that's a good choice too because when you're pushing it as hard as he is it can get snotty and loud yeah um, no it's nice yeah that it's, that it's, tamed it really well. it's not bad at all which one is this Again? I can't see that. It. Is the um, is it sumo or no? It's Ronin, right? It's the Ronin. Yeah. yeah, it's the Ronin. That's the Ronin. So yeah. Um, and I talked to a couple of the big, we, we call them heavy hitters, competitors, that said they would shoot this gun at Armac. Right. Right out of the box, just like it is, and, and I compete with it. I was initially I was thinking I hope they do, but now I'm realizing this is the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when I get yeah, to pick your poison, buddy. Yeah, I'll be running a 700 millimeter because I need every advantage <laughs> I can get. But and this is uh, this is turned up a bit. This reg is sitting at 160. Yeah. And it's got a power pump. So yeah. does it seem nearly impossible that you can get 44 grains to go 910 out of the short setup? It does seem like that, and it would be if. It didn't have that, and we weren't sure. pushing wreck. Yeah, I mean that's one sixties, kind of top of the mark that I feel comfortable with. Yep. Remember when I had oh my, my original God. crown up at one eighty for like <laughs> two months, and it was cool, but I just didn't get enough shots. Yeah. It freaking slung stuff. Oh yeah, and I mean fast. still accurate. Oh yeah. Um, and didn't hurt the gun at all. No, I, I mean it was that was maybe about two years ago, um, 
and it's still shooting great. As a matter of fact, my dad has it and he shot it below the reg. I have it down to 150 now. He shot it below the reg so fast. I was like, dad, I, uh, don't you need air? Like, have you shot the gun? Cause he was sending me pictures of um, his nanny. My dad's old. He doesn't need it. <laughs> his girlfriend's kid. And so, um, the nanny was shooting it and I'm like, he's like, oh, she went through a whole tin of pellets. And I immediately was like, what? He's like, oh, no. she shot a whole tin of pellets. I was like, well, how'd you get air? He's like, I don't know what you mean. Uh, he oh, had it down to like 70 <laughs> bar. <laughs> I'm like, dad, you're not supposed to shoot them down below the reg. Um, but I filled it back up. It's sitting there again. It's fine. The only thing, actually, just to help newcomers, if you shoot your gun down below the reg, what you want to watch out for is when you go to fill it back up, that the reg isn't stuck open. Right. So, in other words, it'll climb with the tank pressure if you have this weird thing happen where the reg gets stuck open because you shot it so far below. I did that once, and the next thing I actually, yeah, so I've had that reg up to 220 mm -hmm. because I was. I, it was yeah, a while you were before a I, I freaked <laughs> out, um, but I shot it back down and then didn't have a problem. Yeah. So anyway, if you shoot below the reg, just be careful refilling. Watch the reg gauge actually stops where you think it should. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I didn't do any damage, but I'm sure I got lucky. That was a lot of pressure. They're not supposed to handle no. that. So. Well, that was with the, um, oh, that was. That was with the amp. It was with the amp. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think one of my crown was one of the first sets to actually have yeah 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 we, yeah it was because we checked serial numbers yeah i was like well hell let's put it to 180 yeah and i did so anyway why are we talking about the crown yeah we got the shorty hey so, you gotta call me names yeah <laughs> <laughs> um anything else we should say about this besides well one question i would ask is Steve's which is back there, yeah guys. thank you steve <laughs> hi guys <laughs> um what what kind of scope setup would you run with a gun with such a short barrel. I'm not sure what your question is because we have an element Titan on here, which is not like cheaping out at all. No. <laughs> no, I'm no, I, I understand that, but but so you guys have it in some no limit limits rings. Oh no, and these are actually the, the um, Eagle Vision, the Eagle Vision rings, which yep. okay, we really do like, but. Every yeah. time we want to swap them around, we're, yeah. we're snapping them. I don't know. Do we have any here. broke over here? Keith was saying, oh, it's because Norm's tightening them too tight. And yeah. the problem is, it's not like when you tighten them down, they snap. It's if you go to readjust them and you go to loosen them back up is when they snap. Yeah. So I'm going to be taking all my, uh, I'm taking all my screws out and I'm putting stainless. I think, yeah, and I think that solves the problem. Oh, yeah, because I love the rings. Yeah, the rings are great. It's just the screws I don't like. And it's to be candid, we're, or clear rather, we're not talking about this. We're not no. torquing. The, these are done with a torque wrench, yes. you know, 15 to 20, depending on. But what we're talking about is these set screws. And because they're canting like that, just like the FX No Limit rings do, we tighten the hell out to make sure yeah, that they don't move. never had a problem. The, yeah, the FX rings, on, off, yes. on, off, yeah, no yeah, problems. Yeah. These, every single time we've tried to back it off, snaps. Yeah, like but, a shear pin almost. Yeah, like a shear pin. So, I mean, I'm sure that stainless will fix that. Or, you know, we could just trust that everything will work out and do it to what they say for <laughs> torque specs. Yeah. But I don't, man. I don't, things that move, I want yeah. tight, tight. So. And uh, you were asking about the scope, Steve. After you have an element scope like this, it's hard to go back to. This you know, you say, oh, well, we're only going to shoot um, this gun out to the most 70, 80 yards. Yeah. We can put a cheaper scope on here. Trust me. When you get used to a scope like this, you don't want to go backwards. I have that. Um, I have that Hawk on my compact. Yeah. And it was. It's fine, but it's like I feel so handicapped not being able to dial. That's what I mean. And man. that's this has twenty. You got yours in MOA. This has twenty five MOA per rotation. Right. Which is awesome. Um, yep. And it's like you just keep going. I mean, you were shooting it at 270 yards. Were you holding yeah. over at 270? No. Just dialed. Dialed it. It's amazing. And I still have more in there. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to do a whole video just on scopes. Yeah. One day. Yeah. But, um, and we are part of Team Element. So it's not like we don't have a favoritism towards Element. We do, but it's because of the product. 
It's not because, oh, yeah. you know, we're part of the team. These things are amazing. And for the money, yeah, you, you can't. can't. You and, can't. and trust us, if you've seen our videos and stuff, we have a great reputation of our honesty. And if these scopes weren't what we wanted, yeah. we wouldn't be any part of them. Yeah. You know. Uh, this you, is, in my opinion, the very tippy top tier. Like the first time we used the Titan, we have we have night forces, and I was yeah. a hardcore night force guy. Yeah, he was. Oh, he drove me crazy. I was night ready force. to like toss it. Um, the Titan in particular is just amazing. The Nexus is amazing. The Helix is amazing, but all all in like their price points. Exactly. What surprises me so much is that the Titan is to me like I think they could price it the same as the Nexus. Without a doubt. Honestly, it's a sixteen hundred dollar scope all day. Yeah, you're buying for eight hundred? Yeah, eight hundred. Eight hundred dollars just insane, insanity. It's nice. our night force that costs eighteen hundred. Yeah. I love the scope and stuff, but it's not anything like this for eight hundred. No man, and the feel of that um, yeah. Like I said, we need a scope video. This one's yep. supposed to be about guns, but yeah, I don't like that. So <laughs> again, my go-to gun right here. Yeah, that's awesome. It is. That's awesome. Yours should be coming soon. Steve and I ran away. Yeah, yeah these guys. I'm telling you, when these two are re anywhere near me, I cannot <laughs> turn my back to pee because I look around and they're gone. So I can't. Yeah, my gun's <laughs> gone. Those two are gone. Well, that was the day I had my compact. And I had the hawk on it. Right. And it was, that's in 22. Yeah. And I shot one in the side of the head at like 80 yards. And I'm, I was pretty sure it went back down. So I was like, I'm not doing that again. No. And then, uh, you know, 44 <laughs> grains at 910. Yeah, go. that was it. <laughs> and that was the last I saw of the gun for at least an hour. So <laughs> it was not that long. And oh, it, was, it was so nice to, to walk around with a lighter impact. Yeah. It was because, like, there's a lot of, like, obviously the impact line has features that people want. That's why it's so successful. But to have it in a short package is oh, something man. all new. And I was, like, kind of looking at it with a, the tiny bottle and the small barrel. And I, I was skeptical. Mm -hmm. But I'm not now. Once, oh, once you God. shoot this thing, it's nuts. I've, I've ordered one. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you'll see me with one soon, too. I'm on the wait list. Mm hmm. Merry um, Christmas to you. Yeah. <laughs> Next gun. Next gun. Let's right. do it. So, heavy hitters. Heavy hitters. We figured if we're going to do one, we might as well do the other. Yeah. And it's a good compare and contrast, too. Um, this is the Air Force Texan in 257. And it's one of the original ones with, you know, the. Uh, the metal tank. They're, they have carbon fiber tanks now that can make them push a whole lot more PSI. And this right there, that's what it shoots, 257. This is a 85 grain. Um, I bought this gun specifically so that I could shoot it out seven, 800 yards and have a reliable 500 yard woodchuck gun. Yeah. I, I don't have that yet. No. Nope. Um, I had got an external Huma for it. For whatever reason, that one creeped. Um, the guy who sold it to me is doing right by me and he's gonna send me another one, so I don't have any issues there. But this has to be the hardest gun to tune that I've ever tried to tune. I've got one of these stupid things on there and that actually did work. I know this gun's capable of some serious long range accuracy, um, but it so far is not a complete project. And you spent a little bit of time on this. I spent a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, yes. The the gun itself wasn't so expensive, but the external regulator, all the hoses to fit, this mount alone was like $425, oh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Which I don't regret spending that, because even if I decide to scrap this project, we I can put it on still... the Daisy Rider. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, <on> Daisy. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm tempted to put it on my impact. Because yeah. I feel like that impact, you know, I run out of, uh, I run out of turret oh, adjustment yeah. at like 350. Yep. And I feel like that gun can do a lot more well, than that. Well, you kill, what, two woodchucks? Well, one at 355. Yeah. And then like two in a row at like 330. No, no, that was 310. 310? Yeah. 310, okay. I killed two in a row. Okay. 
That's, that's with my FX impact to be clear. Uh, yeah. That Utah Air Gun's custom tuned. Yep. An I remember it was just gun. stupid numbers. Oh, yeah. And it was like the coolest part, was like, dead. I, I know. Dead. I'm like, Keith, <laughs> Keith, there's one right to the left just popped up. Yeah. And the one at 355, the camera cut off. Yeah, yeah I know. Perfect headshot. But the thing with those 330s, I mean the 310 shots, it was like you kill the one, moved right over to the other one. It wasn't like it took you. A lot of people like, oh, it takes these guys, it takes these guys 10, 15 oh, shots. Yeah. It was one shot. Yeah. Boom. One shot each. Ding, ding. <laughs> um, that's an amazing. But okay, we're not even yeah. we're not even talking about that impact yet. We're trying to talk about this Air Force Texan. I have it maxed out in every way to try and get it up to um, the highest speed possible because the ultimate goal here is super long range, um, and it groups the best um, at the super high velocities. I'm not going to get into consistencies or anything like that because again, I it's not a complete project. Right. All I can tell you is. The trigger makes me miss better triggers, um, and it has a weird impulse when it goes off, and the styling of the gun isn't to my liking. That being said, it's one of those guns that it can, there's no other air guns able to do what this air gun can do. Right. So it's like, you buy a Texan because you actually have a chance at 700 yard, 1000 yard shooting. Yeah. Um, so in that respect, it's a great platform. It's solid. It's got a, a heavy regular barrel on it, which I feel like is part of the reason why it's gonna be able to take all that abuse of these high pressures. Yeah. Um, and it feels a lot better. Um, Crayford Lip was nice enough to send me this, that and nice. that made a huge difference. <clears throat> Um, so if you have a Texan and you want it to shoulder more like a regular rifle instead of feeling like there's an air tank in your head, um, <laughs> this is a great piece of kit. Um, other than that, I think we'll revisit this gun when I get it to where I want it because I know that it's not where I want it now. Um, and I think it can get there. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, this is Rick Reams' gun. Right. And he was shooting it amazing. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I just, but he can shoot a straw. Amazing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing that this gun can't live without is a huge moderator. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the Emperor. It does a great job. Without it, it sounds like oh a gun. God. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, loud. A, it's, a, it's gunpowder gun yeah, sound. It's loud. With that, it's not backyard friendly, but it's no big deal. But oh, no. like without it, I want your pro. Mm -hmm. So. Um, keep that in mind too. Like you'll actually have to take this to a gun range. Um, oh, without the moderator. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the name of this mount. That oh, I bought, that but... is the um, Moab, I believe. Yeah. Right? No. No, it's not the Moab. Uh, yeah, I don't think. No, I don't think so. I forget which. No. Oh, okay. The Valdata. Oh. It's the Valdata. I oh, think. Okay. Uh, really expensive, but like I said, I'm not <laughs> upset about buying that because that'll go on anything. So oh yeah, I'm super excited to have that on hand for whatever. Yeah, um, my own night forces on top of it. Um, I don't know. I feel bad. I don't have a lot of nice things to say yet, but I'm not sure if that's the gun's fault so much as all the support equipment that mm -hmm. just isn't working out. So we'll revisit. And with us guys, we give it 110 percent to make a gun work. And if it doesn't work, it goes. We don't have yeah. anything that won't shoot to what we want it to right again to be yeah to be like to level the playing field i'm sure a lot of people would be happy with oh, what this oh, gun yeah. is doing right now yeah I'm without just, a doubt you know because i want to i want to hit that golf ball at 700 yards yes. it's not going to do that right yeah. now uh it's gonna I, I was hitting a 12 by 12 plate at 420 yards over and over again mm -hmm. um but that's so what? I, you know, that's not what I got it for. I got it for further and yeah, smaller. So exactly. We'll see where we get with it. But let's get this one out of the way. And before we're totally done, though, with that, I want to just show these two rounds because we're talking comparison of powerhouses. Two most powerful guns we have. That's the 257, and that's the 35. And to give it reference in hand against my fingers, uh, the 35 is. That's a huge diameter. <laughs> and Nine this, millimeter. Yeah, and, and this reminds me of like real rifle bullets. You know? Yes. And they yeah. fly really stable and well. Um, so far from somebody else's 257, in case you're wondering, we're seeing destabilization around 700. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's still like zipping in there, but they, they start to, I don't know, it's like flyers. And you're like, did it go sideways or right. what happened? So anyway, I'm gonna say max effective <laughs> range for that gun. If I get it set up the way I want, it's hopefully 800, but yeah. I, if, I, if we hit 700, I'll be happy. And consistently 500 would be nice. It's gotta be that, yeah. I'm not gonna shoot it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this yeah, is Goliath. This, about, one, <laughs> this one I surprised Keith with. These, when these to came be out. clear, he didn't give it to me. No, no, no. He no, just no. took it. He just showed yeah. it to me. Yeah. No, he and didn't even let me take it. I wasn't allowed to touch it for like the first two no, weeks. No, because the other 13 of my guns disappeared <laughs> for like two months. But anyway, <laughs> this one I had to have um, when it first came out. I had saw this thing and I was telling Keith about it. And um, I said, I gotta get one of these guns and see what it's all about. So it was worth every penny because, uh, I mean, I shot, I think the farthest I killed a woodchuck with two, a pellet, 226. Two, oh, yeah, 226, two, two okay. 226 yards. Uh, and I mean, it just crumpled him stone dead. And that was a chest shot, right? Yeah. yeah. 226 yards. You can shoot a woodchuck at 20 yards yeah. with a 25 caliber in the chest and it's not gonna crumble. No, nope. this thing just crumpled it. Um, and that's 800 millimeter barrel in this one. Um, 580 cc bottle, bigger bottle. Mm -hmm. um, but for a 35 cal, I mean, of course with the um, Ronin on it, it's decent, it's not, uh, it's not whisper quiet. No, it's not whisper quiet, but, but it's, it's not. It's not obnoxious. No, not at all. Um, and I'm gonna. I can't wait to be able to shoot slugs through this because I'm gonna push this out to hopefully 400. I think. I think it's a 400 yard gun. Rick Green was saying he thinks it's a 400 oh, yard yeah? gun. Good. We just need the projectiles to do it. Yeah. Pel you know, you can't push pellets that far. No. I mean, but I mean, you could, but there's not yeah. much reliability. Nope. But I was impressed. The, the The biggest difference with this gun to me is the way that it recoiled. Mm -hmm. You notice a big, big difference going from 30 to 35. Yeah. Like the 30, well, also the 30 that I have was tuned by Utah Air specifically to be quiet. Like mm -hmm. not in sound, but in like recoil. Yeah. Whereas um, this one is just like, it's like, Wah! you know, like <laughs> if you're not holding on to it. Well, this know. one here, I got pushing an 880. An 81 grain pellet at 880 feet a second. Yeah, that's pretty fast yeah. for that much weight. But I'll tell you, it is a laser. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that how much like shoots like one hole at 50, 75 yards. <laughs> our, remember our first hunt with this? Oh yeah. Woodchucks weren't out yet. Yeah. It was raining, so we were stuck in my barn and we were shooting blackbirds off the hog feeders oh my and God. stealing our grains. <laughs> really a 35 for blackbirds? Yeah. But we wanted to try it, so. I took that one's head completely off. Just straight off. And what, that was out there, 170? Was, yeah, and we were shooting them at 140 a lot too, I think, that day, something so, like that. So, um, yeah, it's a great gun. It shoots the, with the weight of these, it reminds me of slug performance in a smaller caliber. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, ballistics-wise, wind drift-wise, um, impact wise this is like a 30 caliber slug right almost yeah. i would say i mean if you see that video well, that one i shot in the chest at 226 yards you could see in the slow motion that keith did in there edited in there its whole body the energy that whole woodchuck just like oh yeah almost Whoa. vibrated his yeah. whole body shook when that thing hit him at at that distance and yeah. like i said it didn't even Flick its tail, it was done. Yeah, that, that was impressive. Yeah. And, and I can't remember, is this an air hog? Like how many, do you get no, a full mag? I get, oh yeah, what? I get a little bit more than a full mag out of this. And how um, many, do you remember how many that is? 13, maybe, Okay. I think. And that's for what this gun's intended purpose, that's a lot. Cause like oh, this, yeah. there's no way you could shoot a bird off of a silo with this or you know, off oh, of yeah. roof. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, this, there's no, this is gonna break anything it hits. So, <laughs> it's. Well, this one I mainly got for coyotes. 
Right, yeah. This was gonna, and I cannot wait again for slugs to come out for it, but this one I am going to kill. We are gonna kill a bunch of coyotes. Yeah, I'm gonna put my, uh, one of my thermal imaging scopes on this, and we are gonna definitely kill some uh, coyotes. Yeah, this. our our buddy Philippe, uh, sharpest the shooters on Instagram, he's got all this Oh my God. Night vision. Best thermal. of the best. Yeah, it's, the best of the best. Oh yeah. And, uh, he was talking about coming up, we're gonna do a night hunt. So yeah, I think, I think this with, the thermal scope, oh baby. Oh yeah, oh, can't baby. wait. So I mean, the finer points, it's big, it's heavy to carry. Yes. However, for it's, for going to lay out on a woodchuck field. And that's what it's for, really. Yeah, I mean, right now, because there's a ton of slugs for the 30, they're neck and neck. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when you, get, when you get slugs in this, there's gonna be no doubt what you're reaching for if you see a woodchuck at 350. There's no doubt at all. Yeah. <laughs> and so in your guys' opinion, that's a big game caliber too, right? Would you uh, say? Like wild, wild hog? I don't really want to get into no. that. Well, first of all, I don't want to get into it. Second oh, of okay, all, all right, all right. yes and no. I mean, you could, theoretically, a 22 long rifle is the perfect deer gun as long as you make brain shots every freaking time. So it's not about that. It's about power levels in most of the states that allow air gun hunting probably... You know what? No, I'm not. Yeah. We're not touching that. We're not touching it. <laughs> no. Sorry, guys. Out there will, and we'll let them do that. Yeah, we're but, more. We big game hunt, but we do it with yeah. powder burners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, our expertise is more about varmints and pest control. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, because we got our powder burners for for deer. Yeah, I mean, I would love to take a deer with air one day. Oh yeah. But and we will. Yeah. If they make it legal in in New York here. Uh, yeah. There's no doubt at all. It's not in our wheelhouse, so it's just not something we need to deal yeah. with. I don't, I, I don't have enough experience on it to actually say. Yep. All I know is you can kill deer with a pencil if you fling it fast enough and put it in the right spot. Yeah. But and Keith has done that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say that this is right at home killing woodchucks and coyotes. Oh, without a doubt, and that's yeah. what we, that's what we got it for. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, it was worth every dime. Yeah. To me. My and, wife might not agree with that, but <laughs> I know. I was like, "Are you seriously buying?" He's on the phone, <laughs> making the making the offer on it. I'm like, "Don't, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it." But I did that with the thirty too. Yeah. Who was that really nice guy uh, that you bought the first thirty from? Oh, um, um, Craig. Craig. Yeah. From Straight Shooters. Straight Shooters. Yeah, yeah. Man, I love Craig. He's awesome. He's an awesome uh, guy. If you guys ever want to. You know, talk to a really nice guy in yeah. a small shop. Craig and Sharpshooter. No, what? Straight Shooters. Straight Shooters. Yeah, straight yep. shooters. I almost said Shark. Oh, no. Uh, that, that's us. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Philippe's channel. Oh. oh. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's awesome. So He is. No uh, anything else we want to add to this? True boy. I don't know. I mean, uh... I mean, it's a hammer. At the end of the day, is. this is the gun you buy if you want to, you know, drive a nail with a sledgehammer. When it comes to wood shots. Absolutely. Um, yep. Again, I don't recommend it for shooting birds unless you're on your own property with a hillside behind it, like we Yeah, had. yeah. If you're shooting crows or something out in a cornfield with woods behind it. Yeah. Um, or like you say, as long as you have, know what that backdrop is all about. Yeah. There's zero chance a roof of any kind survives a hit. <sighs> like it's yeah. just not going to happen. So. No. And again, that's, that was the whole purpose of this video, right. to show why we have different guns for different jobs that we do. Yep, yep. And, and when uh, it comes time for woodchucks. This is the baby, baby we go to. And oh, we, we haven't even talked about some of the support equipment that we should consider mandatory, mm -hmm. right? So like... Oh yeah, without a doubt. Bag rider, it's, it's a no-brainer. If you ever shoot a gun with a bag rider on it, you'll never shoot another one that doesn't have it. Yeah. Um, and same thing with this. Uh, this adjustable buttstock, it adjusts for length, it adjusts for your cant. There is nothing like having that on for an impact, in my opinion. Saber Tactical did an amazing job when yeah, they came they really up with those, <clears throat> those two things. And I really like the, the extended rail can be oh. whatever you want it to be. It can be Arca Swiss or it can be yeah. all Picatinny or whatever, but uh, extended rail, in my opinion, is a mandatory addition to an impact because otherwise your bipod's sitting right here. Yeah. So yeah. you swap that out, now you get it far, farther forward, you can go prone with it more like um, you know, a traditional rifle. 
where it's at the fore end of the stock. Absolutely. Um, and it just makes it more stable. So this is one of the sexier guns that we yeah, have. Yeah, I love this gun. Um, this is a FX Streamline Classic, but it's sitting in the Sabre Tactical chassis. Yeah. Um, and the chassis is kind of a gun review of its own. It really is. I mean, <laughs> uh, there's so much to it. You know, it's not just looks. It's, uh, I mean, it, it folds in here and, and then it, you know, it's, it's nothing cheap. It's built right. I mean, it's magnetized so it, you can hear it actually click. And it takes actual effort. Oh, to yeah, to pull it apart. I was surprised at how strong but, that was. Well, through my arms, it was very easy. Yeah, I'm sure it was. So, <laughs> so <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you're busting my ball oh, about my ball. Oh, my God. I don't even, it's, it's him. Just, here, oh. everybody oh, see this. Oh, wait a minute. See this number, contact them and tell them to stop interrupting us. <laughs> I'm just some telemarketer. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's just leave all that. All right. Why? So, yeah, why not? Right. That'd be funny. Yeah. Okay. So, back to the gun, like the Dreamline Classic, just to get that out of the way. It comes with a wood stock. Right. Which is beautiful. It's yeah. got Monte Carlo, um, like, cheek piece on that. And it's very, very comfortable. It's a, like a traditional right. gun. It's the most traditional, yes. like, that and a crown are in yeah. competition for, like, classic stocks. Yep. Um, and this is a 22 caliber, and it ships the hybrids. Oh, it's one Absolutely old. insane. It's, ama it's amazing. Um, what liner do you have? This one I have the... It's not a Superior. No, right? it's no. One of the original I think it's slugs. a regular slug liner. Yeah. yeah. Um, and do you recall how fast you're shooting them? My guess would probably be nine high nines. 980, 990. Okay. I remember you were pushing them fast, and we were like, yeah. I'm surprised that's even doing it. Um, this might even be over, this one here may actually be over the 1,000 mark. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I had that down at the gravel bank, and I'm thinking I pushed this over 1,000, actually, with those hybrids. We're going to look back at the data, yeah. and we'll put it in the description here so that we're not mistelling, because we have a bunch of cool toys, and I'm yeah. a little confused as to <laughs> which and one it is and now. While, and while you're, Are you going to bring it up? I was going to say, while you're talking, I'll yeah. try and so bring I'll, it up. So I'll bring that up now so we don't have to put it down here, and I'll just say it. So obviously it's cool that that flips in, but it's also got this butt stock on it, which, again, is you, you can't deal without it. Um, this is a really, really nice trigger, and the Dreamline itself in the Classic is a great way to get into uh high-end pcp air guns if you want to i mean it's like you know one of the not so expensive models but you're getting all the fx quality so it's the you know, same trigger the same smooth twist all that good stuff yeah um, but you're not shelling out 2200 bucks for an impact right and, you know for i would say 90 percent of casual air gun shooters you don't need an fx impact or you don't need to no. spend the 2200 bucks um, it's when you want to really be precise at distance because this is about half the cost of yeah. an FX Impact. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just as precise. Oh my God, um, yeah. You know, for quite a bit, it's like those extreme ranges that we like to shoot at that yeah. I'm like, no, I want nothing but an Impact in my hands uh, when it comes to that. But if you're gonna, if you're looking to shoot ground squirrels, at 150 yards. Oh, yeah, all day. Done, done, done. Oh my god. And, I mean, way further too. But. Yeah. Did you find the data? Yeah, 985. 985. Okay. And that's with the hybrids. That's with the hybrids. With the standard slug liner. Yep. And just, uh, I just remember taking this thing. I think I was laying at one of the farms with this when they first sent me this chassis, and I just laid in one spot, and I mean, just killing birds from 50 yards out to probably 170. Um, those starlings. Oh, they're the best. Yeah. Okay. So, so with with a pellet liner, how does that work? No, yeah, your pellets pellet. great, but the, yeah. the hybrids, Sometimes. we had mixed results. Yeah. Like, we got one gun to shoot them well, and another one didn't. Yeah. But you, when you put the slug liner in, then they then they perform. They, yeah. And the same thing with, you know, superior liner. Um, but 
What we did find though is a lot of times the slug liners will shoot both. Yes, and that yeah. is why that's basically what we have in each gun. Yeah. Yep. Because um, they, they, especially the heavier pellets. Right. Like in 25 caliber, instead of shooting 25 grainers, we shoot the 34 grainers in a slug liner um, so that we can flip flop back and forth. Because um, we do a ton of target practice and we don't want to spend, you know, 20 cents a shot on no. uh, a slug. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, instead, we'll <clears throat> just, you know, shoot the pellets. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole lot cheaper. Um, yeah, th the 30 cal slugs I shoot are like legitimately 20 cents a shot. Oh, you bet. And they're 100% worth it when, oh. you're, when you're killing oh. game. Uh, but if I just want to blow up a soda can at 50, no, I'll shoot the pellets. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so the slug liner kind of kind of is an all around winner. And, and that goes for all of the guns. So yeah. Um, the only thing we haven't done is try and ship slugs out of our 22 compacts because it's not why we bought them. Yeah, uh, no. The, the, the Dreamline. The Dreamline, dream yeah. Tanks. I mean, we really bought those for the barns and uh, close range and mm -hmm. them being light. And even like the squirrel hunting. Like, right. Keith, we're anal about safety. And, um, you know, he's shooting up in the air in these trees at squirrels. Yeah. They want to be letting these um, slugs rip. Right. You know? I've got a big farm, so yeah. I can comfortably be in the woods at my farm and say, if I take a shot this way, right. I have, you know, 1,200 yards of safe clearance. Yeah. And if I'm shooting a pellet, oh, rainer, yeah, done. Um, slugs, mm, no, I guess. Yeah. And you're not nervous. shooting squirrels at 200 yards anyway. No, you no, we're I mean? shooting them most of the time 20 yeah. this time of year. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. when the leaves come off, maybe so 60, pellets. 80. Yeah, pellets are the perfect thing. Absolutely. Um, and that's, like I said before, this the stock that comes with this is awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. But I don't know, I'm more of a tactical type of guy. And then when I saw this, I had to have it. Well, plus <laughs> the, there's there's beautiful and then there's, and, and it's functional too, but this oh, is yeah. fully customizable function. Oh yeah, I mean, you look you got, like Keith was talking about the bag rider before on the, um, the, the impact. impact. And this thing here has got, you know, the bag rider built in, adjustable cheek piece here that goes up and down yeah you, see, you got to pull that outer it looks I like there's a button right this. there i haven't even uh, used this but anyway i'm surprised you oh it's because your head's big just the rest yeah. is small but that does go up and down <laughs> yeah so uh well and you have all these accessory rails on the side as well yeah and again picatinny up front you got the arca swiss all the way down so yeah. wherever you want your pivot point to be absolutely um, and this again this butt stock they're on yeah, all yeah. of our guns yeah you, every gun we get we get these butt if it'll stocks, accept huh? that oh it's absolutely going on. yeah um and here to, to operate this you just come in here and you just yep squeeze yeah, that right in from the side that's yeah. really slick and it's right got here. little individual clicks yeah and then so. this is where am i here I am. this button right here is Could how you loosen you, that up so, oh you got that on there yep what, are you afraid somebody's gonna steal it? Yeah. But you know I was around, so this <laughs> goes up and oh, down, cool, which cool. is really cool. Yeah. Um, and then also, where am I? There it is. I can't do it backwards. Help. You got something too tight on there. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> so this. <laughs> Thank like you. Like I said, I, um. I Dude, that's nothing. That's not, that's not just shirt pull. I don't have my glasses. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, so anyway. Did, didn't you almost break your wrist earlier? <laughs> oh yeah, I walked through the door. Cause you walked in. And this is how I get greeted. I haven't seen him in like a week. This is how I get greeted. Hey buddy. He puts his hand <laughs> oh, on my Sorry, you almost did. And as soon as, he, <laughs> and as soon as he hits me, he's like, ow. <laughs> I really did hurt. Well, so here's the deal. This is like newscasting where you just see from, you know, yeah. here up. I was out deer hunting and I told Steve and Norm that we should meet at 10 a.m. Yeah. And at 8.30, I walked away from eight deer in a field feeding my way slash easy stock to get within 30 yards because I'm bow hunting. And at 10.20, Steve shows up and at 10.30, Norm shows up. So yeah, I pushed him. <laughs> Yeah, he pushed well, me around, <laughs> bullying me, constantly bullying me. Norm, if, if you listened, he said at 8.30 is when he left. I yeah. did. Because um, so I that, had that would have given him an hour work. and a half. Yeah, but it's our fault. But it's our fault. I yeah. have to put a lot of oil in it. 
Yeah, you know. To get it to look the, the day we do videos, he's got to do his beat. Listen, <laughs> all, all we did was saving you the embarrassment and telling us how you missed a deer today. No, That's probably true, because I'm yeah. shooting a recurve with no Actually, sight. after this video, we got to go pick up all his arrows. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. What all else do we have to say about that? Um, boy, oh boy, like I said, I, I really like this for just laying down where I don't have to walk around. All right, this piece here. Oh. Yes, that is an That's order from, after part. It doesn't from FX. need it, but it, it, it's security to me. Yeah, I, because of the barrel, the length of the barrel, and then when you put the yeah, um, you get a, a suppressor, suppr on. suppressor on there, it droops a little bit. But uh, this, you know, FX come up with that thing, and I make it with that took. Uh, All right, this, right this piece it. here. Because that's every right. single one of your guns had had this on well, it. Well, you uh, notice we that's didn't... just on my gun and not on Keith's. Yeah, <laughs> because so... <laughs> at my age, I'm blind, pretty much. So to read the dope. Oh, look at that. You can see that from way back here. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much where I have my head, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Doc, Keith, <laughs> whenever we're going to do double taps or something, he's like, okay, say 100 yards. And he just is dialed by the time I'm sitting there trying to front, <laughs> look here, and I'm looking. And well, a lot of time before I did this, I'd be like, Keith, yeah, that's, he would dial it for me. So I was going to say, I was the happiest when he made this. <laughs> because before that, I would have to dial my scope yep. and then lean over and dial my yeah. scope. Because he, he literally couldn't see the numbers. Yeah. So I said, there's got to be an easier way. So the OCD norm, sitting there thinking about it, I'm like, hmm, let me call my buddy Steve. Because Steve here is a genius when it comes to graphic designs and computers and stuff, and gave him my idea, and he uh, designed this little ring here that'll clip to any diameter scope. And then I took, you know, those little tick removers you buy at CVS or whatever with a magnifying glass. I just took the magnifying glass off that tick maneuver, I mean the tick remover, and put it on here. Was so it we could tie. It could Did go all the way back. Yeah, and then I zip tie. Yeah. We drilled a hole through there, and then uh, so it could flip up and down. Thank goodness he came up with that. Oh, I love it. It was arduous hunting with you before you had that. Oh, oh my god. I mean, it was kind of fun. It's much more fun now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but now you have less of a chance of taking that only shot. You know, and missing. Now we have. I knew that was coming. That's why I started this. Out. <laughs> have another sip. Oh my god, it's empty. No, I got a little refill. <laughs> Next gun? Next gun. Oh, there's more? Yeah, you're gonna see those. You guys more. are outrageous. <laughs> so these all have something in common. A couple things actually. They're all FX impacts and they're all 700 millimeter barrels. And that's our preferred long range rig. Yes. Um, this one is a 30. This one is a 30. 30. And that one is, is 25. 25. Yes. Um, all of these also have something else in common. They all come out of the custom shop at Utah Air Guns. So, and it's not just looks. Like, I mean, oh, the, yeah. the looks are wow. Um, but they do other stuff too. So let's talk about um, what you can get done. This is literally cut in. It's textured like feels like, looks like snake skin, Godzilla skin. Um, that's why this gun is aptly named Godzilla. Um, plus it's just destructive. Um, I shoot this at a very moderate tune. Um, Justin tuned it um, before he sent it and it slings varmint knockers, uh, 50 grain varmint knockers at 917 feet per second, which is pretty slow uh, according to Dale for his slugs. At Varmint Knockers, it's Dale Rickard, but uh, they just shoot lights out. This is this is the gun that I've killed. I I don't even. I'm well over 20, 25 kills over 300 yards yeah. with this gun. Um, it's insane, and uh, I'm not even manufacturing them. It's just that you know the um, the hillside out there from where I work, woodchucks and other predators and stuff come out at 310 all the time. Um, and this gun just lays them in there over and over again. Um, but he did the shrouds for us. He did the, the custom engraving here and it's filled with paint. It's so cool. <clears throat> um, but if you get a Utah custom gun, uh, you can also have them tune it for you, which I asked Justin to tune it for me uh, for the 30. And it's just, it recoils like a 22. Um, I don't have another gun that shoots as nice as this one does. Um, and he did the same thing to Gold Digger, too. Yeah, this is the Gold Digger. This is one from that Justin did from Utah Air. Here, I'm going to move 
this guy out so you can see him. That was Keith's custom that they did for him. This was the custom they did for me. I love the gold. Um, and again, 700 millimeter. This is a 30 cal, 700 millimeter barrel. Uh, we have, this one I kept the pellet liner in. I haven't touched it since Justin sent it. It's only shooting at like 850. This one, it was laying oh my in there. Like <laughs> yeah. over and over yeah. and over. He again. built this. Uh, this is mainly what I just wanted to use to compete with. Yeah. I don't even take this out hunting at all. You don't notice this much in my, many videos. But um, being this COVID thing came up and we didn't get to compete much this year. Yeah. You may end up seeing this come out uh, into a couple hunts, but I mainly left it just the way Utah Air sent it to me um, for competition. And I mean, I absolutely love it. Yeah, that gun's gonna do amazing. The, the tune they put on this gun, you, Keith and I like to tinker and make our stuff shoot like the best it could possibly shoot. We didn't even have to touch this gun. Don't touch it. Nope. That was, I believe, we have a video, um, maybe, Eight ten months ago, when we got them, when we first got them, um, that we did with these two guns, and we were shooting a rock face. Yeah, remember, and it was like I think it was 180 yards, and he was just lacing them into this one spot pellets. over and over again. Yeah, with pellets, and eventually yeah. I was like, "All right, Norton, they get it. That's it. <laughs> they can stop." Yeah, uh, but that's gold digger. I mean, just an amazing gun. Um, I love it. Perfect for you know pellet shooting. Yeah, there's no doubt that uh, when you lose an RMAC, it'll be you and not this. Oh yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about that. And, I love uh, this gun though. It's, it's deadly. Yes, mainly for paper so far. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think we should do another video with just those two guns. Probably. Maybe I'll even shoot pellets out of that just to have fun and go next to each other with pellets. And then of course this one is the one I had uh, Utah Air build for my wife. Um, that was Steve backing up against the chair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steve said it was the chair, but I don't yeah. know if it was the chair. <laughs> <laughs> he had chili last night. Here. Center that up, guys. Center that gun right up in between you. All right. And anyway, so uh, I called Justin. I said, listen, I want to build a custom gun for my wife for our anniversary. She loves going pesting. I couldn't believe that she would love go pesting, and now she pests me to go pesting. <laughs> and... Uh, Anyway, this is going to be getting, the shroud itself is going to be getting the pink as the, well. Yeah, the, yeah. the Cerakote too, um, because I have these lasers, um, and I didn't know how the Cerakote would take over this laser. So Justin and Austin out of Utah Air are making a new shroud for me um, in that color. And what's also with the Cerakote, like if you're not familiar with Cerakote, this is not paint. No. This is not going to wear off. No. It's... So like this the power is, of the coat. Yeah, this is how it will be for eternity unless you're like digging at it with a knife. Exactly. Um, which is great. And it's a great color. It's not like, you know, a bright, bright pink. Mm -hmm. It's called rose gold. And uh, I gave it to my wife for her from our anniversary, seven year anniversary, and she just went crazy. She still can't believe it. Um, I still can't believe it. I can't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Lisa's uh, awesome. So she deserves. Maybe, oh my God. Maybe maybe you should give her the uh, lease. I'm I'm in your court here. Maybe you get that uh, compact too. Oh, those compact. are fighting words there. What? I mean, she you does. Don't it. Oh my God, she <laughs> does make amazing meals and stuff, but the compact. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, I think it's just an awesome display. Of how fairy it could be, you know, you got this powder coat, and yeah. pink, you've got Gold Digger uh, with the gold receiver, you've got Godzilla where it's laser etched. They um, even do dips out there. Yeah, they all do a lot kinds of dips. Those wildcat uh, dips and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we love Utah air guns. There's, we're oh, not, we're we're not even, we don't try and hide it in no. any shape or form. These guys are awesome and they put the best tunes on guns. Well, they're into it like, like we are. I mean, this isn't just a business to them. I mean, these guys love what they do, and it shows. Yeah, it does. You know, uh, you it, know when you get something from Utah Air, it's top notch. Yeah, it's not half assed done. So, it's just done. So the only other thing I can think that you guys might wanna is the stickers that you guys have on your scopes. There, what are those all about? That is to talk about it quickly. Yeah, those are our yardage markers, so we don't have to think in MOA. As long as we're close to the conditions that we zeroed and got this dope in, we can just turn it to the sticker and pull the trigger. However, it's way deeper than that. <clears throat> um, 
and I think that has to be a video of its own. Yeah, because um, there's a lot, like he said, it's a lot to it. Yeah, temperatures. I mean, we've we've had our guns where they're shooting lights out one day, and we went to this one place and we were shooting like the either high or low two MOA, two MOA, high. Two MOA high and high. both guns were identical. Yeah. And we were like, what's going on? Yeah. And then we found out that we had a tornado watch. Yeah. And the barometric pressure was off the charts and humidity was everywhere. Yeah. And maybe that wouldn't matter at 25, 35, right. 40 but yards. But we're shooting, I think, like 210, 220 yeah. yards. And it mattered big time. Yeah. So. Uh, but anyway, they're, if you want them, they're scope stickers. You can get them from Utah. They're not that, yeah. they're, they're not hard to get. They're not no. all that expensive. Um, as a matter of fact, if you're buying a gun or a scope, um, then you just reference us and you can get scope stickers for free. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, I love them. Yeah, I, I, I love them too. <laughs> I, I love them too. I, what I do now is because of that day <laughs> where we had that huge shift, yeah. is I go out to like 100, yep. 130 with stickers, and then everything beyond that I look up in my ballistic. Right, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah, which is a great idea. Yeah. Um, but I think that kind of concludes our... No, we have Stop. one more. Oh, you want to that's talk about right. yeah, the custom of all custom guns that's right. that and came this, out of Utah? This one, Eric? yeah, we got, we got from Utah. This is my much anticipation. favorite to my heart, this well, gun right here. Well, just to touch on what you were saying about that tornado alert, here it is right here. Tornado warning in this area to 3 p.m. Take what? shelter now. Whoa. Oh. I actually, that was probably back August 21st. I actually screenshot that. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and I thought I, you were saying we had to like. Yeah. Oh no, not now. not right now, but that's Jeez. back when it. Oh my god. When it happened. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and I remember, <laughs> I remember calling I'm you trying, guys. I'm trying to hide the. Oh. Okay, so this gun is the I, nearest, dearest to my heart. Yeah, don't leave. <laughs> we're gonna tell you some good things about this. Oh this yeah. This is not just a joke. No. So this came out of the Utah Custom Shop as well, sort of. So, um, Norm and I had just started to work with Utah. Yeah. And um, Justin was awesome. He sent us some scope stickers, actually. Yeah. And then the next thing he said was, hey, I'm going to send a gun. We were like, oh, yeah. And then he said, uh, offline with just me, he said, is Norm cool? And I was like, yeah, Norm's cool. Why? He's like, can you take a jump? I was like, oh yeah, you can take a jump. <laughs> he says, cool, because what I want to do is soup up a Daisy Red Rider and send it to you. And I'm like, awesome. So <laughs> I'm keeping the secret from my best bud here. Uh, and it's starting to like build as time goes on. And it was, I think it was two months yeah, From the man. time that he said he was going to send us something, and I can attest to this too. So, he was going, he was losing sleep. It oh, turned, yeah. it went from, oh, I hope it's a new FX uh, impact with the, I don't know if it was power plenum time or what it was. Yeah, but you're with that, or the Taipan veteran has a new one. Maybe he's going to send next. I know he deals those, and it was just going on and on and on to a point where I was like texting Justin, like. I don't feel comfortable with this joke anymore <laughs> because I thought you were going to send it right away. And it's been like a couple of months since he was acquiring all the little parts and like sending me pictures. I'm like, it's awesome, man. Just send it. But so no expense was spared. We've got serious oh. right, yeah. AR rails, right? In case you want to go tactical with it, it's got flip up sides here and here. <laughs> it's got a red dot on top, yep. a laser underneath. With yep. a full-on Picatinny rail, pistol grip, and go back to our Christmas in Utah video that we did last year when we got this gun. Yeah. This thing shoots. Oh my god. I I know it sounds ridiculous, but you were swinging a oh, like, piece of steel. What yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was a steel plate, right? Yeah. On a swinger, and I'm just think. Pink, pink. We were oh, yeah. shooting it with the laser blasting. Yeah, we were shooting. I think we went all the way up to either 18 or 20 yards. Yeah, dude. shooting from the hip. Yeah, with that laser. That. Yeah, and just crushing a bottle. And, and it was like nice. sighted in when it got here, which had me crack it up because it's all zip tied on it. <laughs> like you can't, you can't actually mount it in any real way. So he, Justin just zip tied the thing. But like Norm said, this is. Oh my God. You know, you could go out and buy an Impact, buy a Crown, buy a Wildcat, 
and they're beautiful guns and stuff, but this was built from the heart, and uh, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, this gun will never, ever, ever go to any anywhere in no, my collection. This is, I this, love this. That's a keeper. So I, I actually have a funny story with this gun, too. I remember the first time I saw it and the first time Norm was going to let me shoot it, so I rack it, and I go outside his door, and I'm aiming it at the snowbank, and he's got a, a little parking lot right next to where he lives, and I look up, and there's a state trooper in the parking lot so i just turn around and come back inside and put the gun on the couch i'm like no norm we can't go out right now did he come no no <laughs> no but uh you know like i said it's a funny fun uh custom but at the end of the day <laughs> just look at the imagination these guys have man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy a long long expensive way for a joke i Ooh. think justin was like it's a $30 gun with $500 worth of crap. I know. <laughs> <Some time too. laughs> I know. I mean, the action is smooth on that thing, too. Oh, it's so a shooter. Good. It's a shooter. It triggers okay. hair. You know, you yeah. basically have to. You really, can't breathe on it. Yeah, you can't breathe no, on it. Don't breathe on it. Yeah. One oh. hole, 100 yards. Oh, yeah. Because those spheres, you know, what are the BBs? What are they? No, oh, those, 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 the, those were because those were CNC right, machines. That's what I'm saying. They weren't like copperheads. No, no, it was well, then, custom made. That right there. Custom. And listen, if, listen to that. Oh, yeah. Now that's how, not how many balls. rounds? How many rounds do you get in an FX high capacity magazine? Well, it depends on the caliber. Let's, but let's say call 28. it 25. Just... 25, it, probably mm -hmm. nine times the capacity. Absolutely. Yeah. Now when he shook that. That wasn't BBs, that was bolts. <laughs> <At that time. laughs> but uh, like I said, it, it shoots amazing and the trajectory, I mean, uh, they, they figured in all of the, um, the face sequences become proportionate with the 8-1 alternator in this. Let's and that, just be clear here. That's a real AccuTac. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, they spare no expense. They spare no expense. Amazing. So, I that think that's that's pretty much the sum Hopefully of we right helped here. a lot of you guys out there that are messaging us. You know, you guys got a lot of guns and yeah. what one's your favorite and what one should I get and you know it's well, really for what you're gonna use it for. The answer is the answer is clear to me which well, one yeah. you should get. I mean it, it, that this video is gonna be brutally long. So yeah. I, like we don't really expect many people to watch it all the way through. But hopefully, you know, the timestamps helped you guys out. You got to learn what you wanted to learn about. And if you've got pointed questions about the guns themselves, yeah. um, comment and Absolutely. We'll, we'll rock it out. Um, we'll help you as much as we can. And I would say look look in the description or the, the pinned comment for yeah. some questions too. Yeah, absolutely. That'll well, answer. The, the timestamp's going to take you to each gun, but there's some things that you know go between guns that you know just common to FX guns that you might have a question about. Does this apply to that gun as well? And we might not have said it. You know, yeah, we'll be happy to answer. Absolutely. So, I hope it helped you guys. You bet. had fun doing it. Oh my god. Um, Always. You had a Corona. I had a Corona. I had a vodka. Good too. Keep it kid friendly. Uh, well, uh, I think it's time for you to start trying out. No, that one was yours, Steve. It's not like I'm double fisting. I just poured yeah. it. Yes. I just Steve's milking his over there. Yeah, that's, he's had that since about 9 a.m. I know. <laughs> Peace, you guys. Thank We're you. out. Bye. <laughs> Three, two. Done. Done, done.